Have you ever pondered about the connection between what you do and who you are? In the first chapter of Ben Horowitz's insightful book, What You Do Is Who You Are, we dive deep into the essence of culture. Now culture isn't just some abstract concept floating around in the ether. No, it's the very fabric that weaves our identities together, both as individuals and as organizations. Our actions, our choices, our behavior, they're not just fleeting moments. They are the chisels that sculpt our identity. They shape who we are and how the world perceives us. It's about walking the talk, not just talking the talk. It's about setting cultural standards and then, crucially, living by them. It's about being consistent, being authentic, being true to yourself and your organization. So let's not just preach about our values, let's live them, let's embody them. Because remember, your actions speak louder than your words and they shape your identity. Ever thought about the impact of your actions on those around you? As we delve into the second chapter of Ben Horowitz's enlightening book, What You Do Is Who You Are, we encounter the compelling concept of role modeling. This chapter underscores the undeniable truth that as a leader, your actions reverberate throughout your organization, setting the tone for those who follow you. Intriguingly, the chapter draws on a rich tapestry of both historical and contemporary instances, illustrating how leaders, through their actions, can mold the very culture of their organizations. From legendary figures who moved nations, to modern-day transformational leaders who revolutionized industries, their actions spoke volumes, creating ripple effects that shaped the ethos of their organizations. In essence, it is your actions that are the loudest form of communication, echoing your values, your beliefs, and your expectations to your followers. As a leader, your actions are always under scrutiny and they have a significant influence on shaping your organization's culture. What happens when a culture needs to change drastically? In our journey through Ben Horowitz's enlightening work, we have now reached the intriguing concept of cultural shock. Cultural shock, as Ben outlines, is not a phenomenon exclusive to individuals moving between countries. It can occur within the confines of an organization, right under our noses. It can be an essential catalyst for radical shifts in behavior that reshape an organization's culture. Imagine a stagnant pond. A stone thrown into it disrupts the calm surface, creating ripples that reach every corner. Similarly, radical changes in an organization's culture create ripples, shaking up the status quo and initiating a transformative process. But how does a leader initiate such shifts and manage the ensuing cultural shock? Leadership isn't about maintaining comfort zones. It is about pushing boundaries, creating waves and guiding teams through the rough waters of change. So when the need arises to transform an organization's culture, leaders must not shy away from initiating radical changes. Radical changes may seem daunting, but they are often necessary for cultural transformation. What's the role of decisive action in shaping your identity? That's the question we delve into in our fourth chapter. The answer, as it turns out, is quite significant. It's no secret that indecision can act as a corrosive force within an organization's culture. It breeds uncertainty, it fosters doubt, it sows discord. It's a sign of wavering commitment, a lack of conviction, a failure to uphold the values that should be at the very heart of the organization. This chapter underlines the importance of decisive action. It's about making tough decisions and making them promptly. It's about standing by your choices even when the going gets tough. It's about proving your commitment to your organization's values, not just through words, but through actions. When you're at the helm, remember this. Your every decision reflects on your identity. Decisive action, even in the face of adversity, is a testament to your commitment to your values. Let's wrap up what we've learned from Ben Horowitz's insightful book. We began by understanding the essence of culture. That it isn't just about values or mission statements, but it's the behavior we exhibit consistently. It's the actions we take on a daily basis that truly shape and define our culture. We then moved on to the power of role modeling. The people we look up to and emulate greatly influence our actions. By choosing the right role models, we can steer our behavior in a positive direction. Next, we talked about the imperative of cultural shock. Sometimes to bring about a significant change, we need a shock to the system something that disrupts the old and paves the way for the new. Lastly, we discuss the need for decisive action. Making firm decisions and acting on them is crucial in shaping our identity. In essence, what you do truly is who you are. Your actions define your identity, so make sure your actions reflect the identity you want to portray. 